Welcome back, Coin Metallurgist here. Hope you're all doing well. I have an interesting item to show you today. At least in my perspective, I think this is a very interesting item. Now, uh, what we have here is just a common silver Roosevelt dime. The dime is nothing special to start with. Um, but what we have here is this dime is encapsulated and Prior to this dime being encapsulated, it was exposed to a radiation source. So this dime was neutron irradiated. This was done at the uh, American Museum of Atomic Energy, which um, was at uh, Oak Ridge National Lab or close by Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, Oak Ridge National Lab was one of the national laboratories in the United States where a lot of the research and a lot of the actual work to produce uh, the different elements and items needed for the nuclear industry started off. Like uh, they produced plutonium there and they um, did, did a significant amount of like the base work to reach our modern uh, knowledge of, of the nuclear industry today. So um, this museum, this American Museum of Atomic Energy still exists, uh, but it has a different name today. It's the American Museum of Science and Energy, and they no longer irradiate dimes there. My understanding is it was probably the mid 50s or, or, or the 50s and partway through the 60s that they did this there. And so this dime would have been put in this, this dime irradiator and exposed to a uh, radiation source. And then my understanding is then it would pass by a Geiger tube and that would demonstrate to the person visiting the museum and and irradiating their dime that the dime did have radioactivity and then the employee there would then encapsulate it in this little capsule which um, is aluminum on the back and some type of uh, plastic covering over the dime itself and then this would be like a souvenir to the person now they weren't really like handing out um, highly radioactive items the 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 radiation that this uh, dime was exposed to activated the silver atoms in the dime so so silver Roosevelt silver dime is 90 percent silver and 10 percent copper and both the silver and the copper can be can be activated by by irradiation um, but the main thing here is that we're getting silver uh, 109 um, becoming silver 110. But the half-life of that nuclei nucleide is so um, short that within like minutes, the radiation would have been almost completely gone from this thing. So now here, 50 plus years later, there's no, there's no... Uh, radiation still on this dime but um, I think it's just kind of an interesting item uh, fun piece of history and, and a, an awesome souvenir like if I mean I can't imagine them doing this today but this type of souvenir is pretty great um, I, I had a difficult time picking these out the the dime and the border is pretty far set back and so a lot of the times when people take pictures the border kind of looks uh, shaded by the aluminum edge and it's difficult to tell the condition um, I did notice that while I was looking looking into buying one now they also did have some different varieties or similar items that were uh, encased dimes for example, they went to the World's Fair in New York in 1964 and did dimes like this, except instead of it being this aluminum plastic case, it was just a larger uh, blue plastic case. 
And the thing to be careful with that is, is that dime isn't entirely encased to where the dime can come out and somebody can put another dime in. Now, it's impossible to know is the correct dime still in there or not, except I've seen a few sell on eBay where it wasn't even a silver dime in there anymore. They would have irradiated a silver dime. They would not have irradiated, irradiated a cupro nickel dime. So if it has a cupro nickel dime in it, you can be like, no, that one's not authentic. Um, especially because in addition to that not working the same way because the material of the dime being different, the World's Fair in 1964, you wouldn't have had like a 1974 dime to irradiate at that point. Um, they also, I've seen these, instead of blue ink, black ink, um, but the same design as this one. And they also had earlier ones that said Oak Ridge National Laboratory on it instead of American Museum of Atomic Energy. And I believe they actually did those ones um, not at the museum. And then uh, there are some that say Mid-South Fairs Atomic Energy Exhibit. And then it says Neutron Irradiated. Now, um, the Oak Ridge National Lab and the South Fairs Atomic Energy Exhibit ones are a lot more rare and extremely more expensive, where this one's fairly common. They probably irradiated almost a million or more of these over the, the course of time when they were had this exhibit at the museum. The uh, World's Fair one was, isn't too much more expensive than this one, um, but the coins are typically... Um, that I've seen are, are kind of really destroyed just because they're not uh, covered as these ones are. They're not completely encased. Um, and actually those plastic holders that they used at the World's Fair, I think it, in the very end of irradiating dimes at the American Museum of Atomic Energy, they also used that same kind of plastic holder, so you can find those also. Um, and I don't know if those are, I don't know how the value of those ones are. Um, let's see. Also, uh, there may be a couple other varieties with those larger plastic holders. Just any one that's not this American Museum of Atomic Energy or the 1964 World's Fair um, tends to be a little bit more valuable than these ones. Um, but just a really fun piece of history and, like I said, awesome souvenir. But I hope you just enjoyed this video of seeing this coin a little bit and hearing a little bit about it. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.